Remember, I can't stress this enough. Anxiety is normal. This is something that we definitely want to talk about. Everyone experiences anxiety at some point in their life. It's a, it's a piece of being human and anxiety can be really helpful. So it's always going to be with us. Now there's lots of different times anxiety is going to show up. So we're going to go through some of those examples. Worries are important for survival, right? We need them whenever there's a real threat, like seeing a bear. When you're out hiking, we need to be able to protect ourselves or run away, get away from that situation. It also helps us get ready, whether it's a big test or a big game, it's motivating us to practice, to do our best or to study, right? And, and then do our best on the actual day we need to teach about what happens in the brain. So in our brain, we have this little thing called the amygdala. It's about the size and shape of an almond. It hangs out because its job is to let us know when we or our body is in danger. And so it's sending out signals in our brain and in our body to let us know. This is you know, a lot of people will call it the animal part of the brain. It's not like the animal part of the brain exactly, but it's, it's definitely the watchdog of the brain. And we hear that quite a bit where it's watching out for us. It's all also the oldest and quickest and fastest and strongest part of the brain. And so it takes over whenever we think that there's a danger, it kind of takes over. Now, it's really important to know that the amygdala processes emotions. And with every thought that we have, the brain secretes a chemical and it creates a feeling. So a, love, a loving thought, of course, will create a loving emotion. And a fearful thought is going to create a fearful emotion. What's interesting is that the chemicals released for certain feelings like excitement is very similar to fear. So sometimes, you know, we might think, well, it can't be excitement because this is really fear. It's just how we're thinking about it. But actually what's happening in our brain and what's actually happening in our body are pretty much exactly the same. It's how we think about them. It's our interpretation about them. It's very different if we're in a scary situation versus an exciting situation. And, and even how we think about it can change our response and what happens within our body. Uh, so this is what happens. We see something dangerous and our amygdala sets off an alarm in our brain. And that sends signals to our adrenal glands, which are just on top of our kidneys, which were, are in our back. And you can see a little picture here. Those are our kidneys in our back. And on top of those are our adrenal glands. Our adrenal glands then sends out adrenaline, which revs up our body to fight or to run away. And so we get all of these feelings in our body. It's pumping up the body to be able to protect itself. Now, remember that amygdala, it's the quickest and fastest and strongest part of the brain. So our body has to re react immediately to protect ourselves from danger really, really fast. And so we have usually already reacted and our body's already feeling yucky, even before our brain has realized our thinking part of our brain has realized what exactly is going on and what has happened, because all of these things happen so fast to get our body ready to fight or to run away. So... Most of the time, though, it's a trickster part of the brain. It likes, we don't have saber tooth tigers anymore. It likes causing a lot of chaos and it sends off all of these false alarms. And that tells us, you know, that there's danger, even though there isn't really any. So when it does, it gets worry into the human thinking part of our brain. And that's when we start getting all of those worried thoughts. The worries grabs on to our imagination. And all we can do is start thinking about the worst thing that can happen. And our brain can't tell the difference between a real bear in front of us or just thinking that there might be a bear out there if we're walking. So our imagining it is just like it's really happening. And all of these things are happening in the body. So it keeps setting off these false alarms. So just thinking about something bad happening will set off that alarm. And when that alarm's rung, the rational thinking part of our brain that that is usually there to tell us it's not a big deal just calm down there's nothing there nothing to worry about that part of our brain is turned off and so that's why we get really upset when other people try to talk to us to calm down there's nothing to worry about because that part of our brain can't hear that message and so remember when that false alarm is rung those little orange things are our little adrenal glands just on top of our kidneys. 
they send out all those chemicals into our body to get us to right to fight or, or, or to run away. And then what happens is we start to feel pretty gross in our body, right? Anxiety is physical. So we have to recognize what's happening in our body and know what it feels like, because oftentimes we start to worry about feeling worried. So although others might try to make us feel better, they actually make the anxiety worse for next time. So we need to learn how to figure out how to cope with this anxiety on our own and make ourselves feel better. But knowing how anxiety can show up can be really helpful. What's going on in our body? So here's some of the things that anxiety can feel like in the body, but we're going to break this down a little bit more. So there's lots of things here, but let's break it down. When our body revs up to take action, right? It's getting all of the, our energy revved up. Lots more blood and oxygen has to be pumped to our major muscles, so our big leg muscles or our biceps. This gives us the energy and power to protect ourselves. So what you might notice is that your heart starts beating faster and harder, right? Because it has to, to be able to move all of that blood to the big parts of our muscles in our body. And then of course, our breathing is going to get faster because we have to send more oxygen around the body into those big muscles as well. And when you breathe too fast or too deep, guess what might start happening? Happening. You're going to maybe feel a little achy in your body, but you're, you might feel a little headachy as well and a little lightheaded. So you might even feel like you have to start hyperventilating. It's not dangerous. It's just your body's way to try to get ready to protect itself. Oftentimes we might misinterpret that thinking, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to suffocate. Now, of course, another thing is chemicals go out into our stomach, which makes us feel really sick and oops, sorry, makes us feel sick. And our digestive system slows down because our energy needs to go to deal with the danger. And so it goes to all of the muscles. So if you you're not going to be digesting any food in there that can give you a really upset stomach. And then we feel like, Oh, I can't go to school or I can't go do this because I feel sick. And that's what's happening. That food is just going to sit in the stomach acid and it's not going to be able to get digested until later once you're calm again. And so we feel sick. We oftentimes see lots of skin problems where we might get a rash or our skin gets really oily. We might have really sensitive skin. And when our body's revving up, it's going to get sweaty a lot more. And we're going to see more maybe itchiness and things like that as well. Our bladder, it's going to want to get rid of any pee that we've got in there too. Same thing with our bowels. If we have anything in there, if we got to run or fight, it wants to eliminate everything. So oftentimes we might feel like we need to go to the bathroom. And our muscles tense up to prepare to, because all this blood is rushing to our big muscles in our legs and to our arms. And then of course our hands, we're going to get all tense. So all of those things are going to start getting really tense so that we can get ready to run away or to fight. Um, but we're going to feel it in other areas of our body as well, because all of the blood is moving to our big muscles. So it's going out of every other part. So it's going out of our hands and out of our feet. So you might feel cold or tingly or numb there in those spots too. So again, it's just part of the way our body is going to protect itself. When we're in danger, our pupils get bigger so that they can take in more light so we can spot danger more easily. And that means things might actually seem brighter or fuzzier. And we might even see black spots or we might see other weird things going on, all of which is really, really normal. But we just might not know what's going on. Our mouth might get dry because it, because we're, you know, everything else that's going on in our body. So it might feel like we can't swallow. So everything that happens in our body, there's so many different things that could happen. It's all normal. Now it definitely feels uncomfortable when each of these things are, are happening, but none of it is dangerous. Even if you feel like you're going to throw up or stop breathing or pass out, none of it is dangerous and it will all go away. It's just really helpful when there is a danger there. Like if a bear really was chasing us or we really did have to fight, but even if there's no danger and we're about to take a test, we can use this energy to help us focus on our test and do our best or play our hockey game or whatever it is that we need to do. Because guess what? All of these changes in the body, it's very similar to what happens in the body when we're feeling excited, right? So we can use this energy to help us, not to stop us. And that's oftentimes what it does. So those are all the things. Now we know what worry feels like in our body. 
We also need to know what it sounds like, which we will be talking about more. And we will be talking more about the human thinking brain and, and how our brain starts to create stories based on the alarm that this amygdala has set off. And it, when it comes to anxiety specifically, it's very imaginative. It's always worst case scenarios, right? It's always trying to protect what's the worst thing that could happen so we can protect ourselves. So like something bad happened to mom or dad if they're late coming home or worrying so much that our stomach feels like we need to throw up, you know, and, and oh, I can't go to school because I might throw up at everyone and then everyone's going to laugh at me. So all of these things start to come up and then we start to have worried thoughts right? And when we're having those worried thoughts, our body's pumped up and all of those things in our body starts happening. And we might run away. We might try to avoid things, or we might even put up a fight. And that's what anxiety looks like. It's what we do to respond to that anxiety. So it's important to know when that anxiety shows up, what it feels like, what it sounds like, and what it looks like. So we can remember, ah, this is just the false alarms going off. I know exactly what to do. So I just want to go into a few more little points here. We can't turn that pesky alarm off for good, right? It's going to still keep ringing those false alarms, especially if we're already overly anxious and we're already overly worried. Those alarms are very, way more sensitive and they're going to go off way more easily than other times. Um, and all of those gross feelings come in. We're still going to feel uncomfortable, but guess what? We can change how we respond to those worries. We can take control and do something about it. We can be ready for whenever those worries show up and start to do brave things, right? And, and brave things that our anxiety, that trickster amygdala isn't going to expect us to do. So we can start to work on those skills that are going to help us surprise worry in the first place. And that's how we are going to become masters of anxiety. So we can't turn that alarm off. We can't get rid of the worry, but we can change how we respond to it. And that's going to be really important for us to know. So now we got to see this mind body connection. And when we can see how our thoughts can affect our amygdala and our amygdala, sometimes we don't even have a thought. Our amygdala will just trigger an alarm and we're going to feel these things in our body. And then when we start feeling these things in our body, we might start having the thoughts and then we start thinking, and it's just, it makes it this vicious cycle that can be really tricky to get out of. Um, but once we have this understanding, we can realize, ah, this is what happens in my body. It's not dangerous. 